Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to download and uh, install um, the standalone for PMAGPI GUI. So first we'll go to the earthref.org PMAGPI cookbook, which is the, the um, link you see here. And when you get there, scroll down to installing PMAGPI standalone GUI download. Pick the operating system of your choice and click on the link. This will take you to the GitHub site where you then click on the, the zip folder of the PMAG GUI latest version. This will start downloading and it takes a while, so I'm going to pause this video. So once you, this will be um, downloaded to your, um, in your downloads folder, uh, which in my case is my desktop. So then you go to the, the PMAG GUI uh, zip file and unpack it. On a Mac, you just double click it, and that gives you your PMAG GUI um, app which I'm now going to launch. The trouble that I had was that uh, I need to right click on a Mac um, because of the security. And so if I right click and click on open, that will open file. Otherwise, you can go to your system and tell it it's okay. It's uh, and then I click on open and that should open. Before we can do anything, we have to uh, have some data files to work with. So we've prepared a zip file with the data files that you can download here at github.com slash pmagpy slash pmagpy, slash raw, slash master, <clears throat> slash data files, slash pmag underscore GUI, slash SIO files dot zip. So when you do that, the data files get downloaded um, it, onto your downloads file. So for me, that's my desktop. And so I, I double click on the siofiles.zip file that I just downloaded. And um, I have a folder here full of, of um, data files. Now let's just take a quick look at these data files, uh, what the format, the SIO format is. So if you wanted to recreate that, you could get the essential parts. Um, so looking at the we have three experiments here. The first one is the Izzy experiment. Um, and the format for all of our SIO files is the first column is the specimen name. That's what you measured. Um, these are space delimited files. Then there's a treatment step. And here, this is the zero temperature treatment step. That's the NRM. Here you have the um, CSD of the measurement because we make multiple measurements. Um, this is the magnetic moment um, in EMU. This is the declination, the inclination, and a, a metadata string that has the date, um, the time, uh, the, the temperature step, what field was applied, in this case zero, because it's the NRM, who measured it, and what instrument it was measured on. So. Um, and the other things about the Izzy experiment is then we do first a zero field step. If we heat the specimen up to 100 degrees centigrade and cool it in zero field, and that's what this step is. Then we uh, treat it to an infield step. So it's the same temperature, but it's got a dot one after it. That means this is an infield step. Now, if you look further on, these are all in centigrade, obviously. Um, if you look further on, you'll see a point 
two step, and this is a PTRM step. So it came after the zero field step for 300, 300.0. Then we have this 200.2, and that means it's a PTRM step. And that's um, pretty much all you need to know. You need to know what field was applied, when a field was applied, and what direction it was, and we'll show you how to do that later. Okay, the next um, experiment that can be done was a cooling rate experiment. And this is a very similar file format. Um, the, you can see here that we did a zero field, uh, or a, we heated it to 585 degrees C, which is the Curie temperature of magnetite. And, um, and then um, measured the NRM. So that's a zero field step. Then we gave it, um, <clears throat> we cooled it in a 40 microtesla field. Um, at under normal circumstances. So that was, uh, we use a fan to cool the, the specimen. So this is a quick cooling, our normal cooling. Then um, there's a second step, which was done at a slower cooling. Um, in fact, it was just disconnected from the fan and allowed to cool overnight. So this is the slower cooling, and that's the same temperature step 0.2. And then there's a, uh, another step at the end here called point 0.7, which is the, a repeat of the first step. So this is uh, also a fast cooling step. So here, um, uh, and I'll show you what, how we deal with these when we import them later. The final experiment that we did was an anisotropy of TRM experiment. And that's a very, no, I didn't want to do that here. That's a very similar experiment, except that we start with uh, heating it to 585 degrees and cooling at zero field, hence the 585.0. Um, and um, then we heat it to the same temperature and cool it repeatedly in a field in six different positions. The first one is uh, uh, parallel to Z, and uh, the second one is uh, parallel to, um, uh, with this, the first one is um, with the field um, parallel to the X axis, the second one is with the field parallel to the y-axis. You can see how the declination is changing. The third one is done parallel to the minus uh, z direction. And uh, the fourth one is parallel to um, the uh, anti-parallel to x. And uh, the fifth one is anti-parallel to Y. And the final one is parallel to Z. And then um, we do a final step, which is parallel, is the same as the first one. And this is an alteration check. And so you can see these are 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, up to 0 0.7. And so that's our, sig that's our signal to PMAG GUI what steps were taken. Okay, now I'm assuming that you have downloaded the files, um, the three files that we're going to practice uploading. I have here the directory that I put them in, SIO files, and the three files are na underscore sw dot atrm, na underscore sw dot cool, and na underscore sw dot tell. Now these three files are uh, an ISI experiment, which is the .tel file, this one, the cooling rate experiment, which is this one, it's .cool, and the ATRM file, which is anisotropy of TRM data. These are measurement data that are in the magic format, uh, the SIO uh, file format, which has a specimen name, uh, uh, treatment step, uh, CSD, an intensity in EMU, a declination, inclination, and a long string that has, among other things, 
the field that's applied at the time, who did it, when it was done, and what instrument was used, and, and, um, <clears throat> and the like. So that's the SIO format. Um, it, I know it's not everybody's, but that's the one I'm going to demonstrate how to convert into magic format. So I'm showing you the, the directory here so you can follow along what's happening by PMEG GUI to these files and how they're transformed into the magic format. So we start by clicking on convert magnetometer files to magic file format. This is the number one. So let's convert. This is the SIO format. So I click on now import file. And I need to add the file that I want to import. Um, and I'm going to start with the Tellier data. So I click on that file, open. And, um, and I, this, now we need to tell PMAG GUI what the experiment is. This is a thermal experiment, which includes Tellier, but not TRM acquisition, which is used for nonlinear TRM, and we're not going to discuss that today. But so we click on thermal, and the lab field was 40 microtesla, so I fill that in, and the direction was uh, anti-parallel to the specimen's Z direction, so that's zero minus 90. Um, in these data, the, the specimen is distinguished from the sample by a single terminal character, and you can see that if you look um, in the, at the data file itself. Uh, here, this is the specimen name, and the capital B here is the specimen. The O3 is the sample, and the site is EU01. So that's one uh, terminal character that distinguishes the specimen from the sample, and the naming convention site to sample is this one with a dash, and you can see that that's true here. So that's what we're going to use. The location name for these data, uh, they came from the Four Corners area of uh, the Southwest United States. And that's all we need for this step to import the Tellier um, experiment. So I click on OK. And um, PMAG GUI is thinking about it. You can see here I've got a message files converted to magic file format. And you can see what happened was that the .tel file got uh, converted to something called .tel magic, which is um, the magic form for these data. And we can take a quick look using Excel um, to take a look at what happened here. Um, it's exactly the same data. And you can see here it we've got the the measurement uh, name, the specimen name, the experiment, the uh, directional data, the field data, see here, this is the 40 microtesla treatment field, and um, the treatment temperatures in Kelvin, and method codes for what each step is. This is a measurement file. So the LT-NO is lab treatment none, which is NRM, and this has been tagged that it's part of this whole experiment, um, and, um, and other metadata that we'll talk about uh, in other places in the workshop. Okay, so that's what happened to that file, um, and we click OK. We've got two more we want to deal with. The next one is the anisotropy data. So we add the ATRM file, and this is a thermal anisotropy experiment. The lab field here is. Um, changes because it's an anisotropy experiment. It was done in six different positions. And um, um, so I, I don't need to fill this in. Uh, the, um, 
this, term, this terminal specimen and the sample to site convention is the same as before, and the location name is the same. So four corners and Tellier Gui went, PMEG Gui went to work on that and created our ATRM magic file, which we can take a quick look at. Um, uh, with Excel, um, here you can see this is part of an anisotropy of TRM experiment. Um, and you can see the lab field treatment steps, um, which are the, the field, the directions and uh, for each sample and the method code tells us that this is an anisotropy of TRM experiment. Okay, the last file is the cooling rate experiment. So let's add that. Um, and this is a cooling rate experiment. The lab field was uh, 40 microtesla and applied along minus Z direction. This, and the specimen to sample, sample to site convention is exactly the same and the location name is the same. And here we need an extra thing. So the cooling rates that the experiment, that the cooling rate experiment was done in, these are in Kelvin per minute. Now there were three steps done for each specimen. A, a normal fast cooling rate, a slow cooling rate, which was overnight, and then another fast cooling rate. And so those rates are 43.6, Kelvin uh, per minute decay in temperature, and then the slow one was 1.3 Kelvin per minute and 3.6 um, Kelvin per minute. So fast, slow, fast was this particular experiment. And, um, and then I click OK. And you can see what happened to that information in our uh, magic file. There. Just take a quick look at that. Here's the same kind of information that you saw before. What happened to our cooling rate is it ended up in the description column. And uh, so the first um, experiment was 43.6 Kelvin per minute, 1.3 Kelvin per minute, and this, so this is what happened. This describes, you can see fast, slow, fast, um, and the um, intensities of the, the magnetizations are a function of cooling rate. So um, the magnetic moment over here, you can see that the fast one's a little bit lower than the slow one, and the second fast one is very similar to the first fast one. So this one is um, probably a good experiment and shows that there's a, there is a cooling rate effect. And since these are ceramics um, from an archaeological uh, experiment, the, these, these data are very important for correcting for cooling rate difference between our lab and the original one. Okay, so that was all three of those. Now we can go to the next step, which is to combine them all into a single measurements table. And so I say, okay, and, um, and that will combine these three into a single measurements table. Now I also wanna do the same thing for the specimen samples, sites, and locations tables. Um, and so these, this hunted through and found all the things called specimen sample sites, and it will combine them together. Of course, in this case, there's only one uh, for each table, and it just basically copies the NA underscore SW underscore specimens to something called specimens.txt, which is the standard name required for magic. Okay, so that did that. And now we're all done with this step. Now we're ready to launch Tellier GUI to look at these data.
So I click on Teleagui and it looks in the data file and here we are. So this experiment included anisotropy information and we have not yet calculated, done anything with those measurements, calculated the tensors or anything. So Teleagui will do this for us. Look under anisotropy and calculate anisotropy tensors. So it did that and it put the anisotropy tensors in the specimens table. So let's take a look at that just to show you what happened. So we calculated um, uh, the change between the first and the last. Um, the, the first and the last experimental directions were the same. So we can compare those two directions. And this is a measure of how much uh, the sample altered during the uh, anisotropy experiment. And in this case, it's not very much. We can use these to, uh, to uh, exclude uh, data. These are a bunch of statistics associated with the anisotropy um, calculation. Here are the tensor elements as a, a colon delimited list of the six tensor elements. Um, and here are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is the principal eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector. Principal eigenvalue is the first number, and the second is the direction, declination, inclination, and this is the intermediate, and this is the minimum, and I saw the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, um, uh, and, um, and this is the method code associated with those anisotropy uh, calculations. So this has just been added to the specimen table um, and can be used by Tellier GUI to correct the, um, the uh, specimen um, for anisotropy. Uh, the next thing that we can do is we can, you can see here there's a bunch of um, statistics that can be calculated. Now these can be specified under preferences, specimen paleointensity statistics from the SPD, uh, standard paleointensity definitions of Patterson et al. Uh, to, to, uh, 2014. And um, in that paper, uh, he um, uh, listed all, all of the possible uh, paleointensity statistics in the literature. Um, most of them are supported by Tellier Gui. Um, and uh, we don't need all of these for our study. Um, I'll just keep a few of these. I want to add in uh, K prime, which is a curvature statistic. Uh, to be calculated. Um, some of these others you, you may or may not be interested in using. Um, <coughs> it's, um, there's a, a lot of options. So let's just save that and uh, update uh, Tellier GUI preferences. And we need to restart the program after we do that. So let's um, uh, restart the program and now we could set, these are the things that we want to calculate. We can set threshold values for those uh, by uh, here, changing what's called the acceptance criteria. So um, I'll just put in some values here. These are unfortunately up to the user. Uh, nobody knows how to do this correctly. Uh, Patterson recommends 0 0.164 to 2 for curvature. If it's a number higher than that, it's uh, highly curved and that's associated with multi-domain behavior supposedly. And so, um, so we'll just use that value for now. Uh, we, the MAD is uh, Kirschfink's maximum angle of deviation, which is the the scatter in the directions, and this is the deviation angle. So the the angle uh, that the principal eigenvector of the directions makes with the origin. So let's set that to five because we really want these things to be going to the origin. Um, and uh, we'll calculate averages by sample because that's the only thing that we are sure 
cool, cooled in the same field because these are ceramics and um, who knows you know what the relationship between the different pottery shards shards are in a given archaeological study now there's other things here i don't want to go into them right now so i'm just going to save that that gets saved to a criteria file which um, is here um, and uh, we can take a look at it so this is what we just made um, this is uh, the the beta which is cos beta has to be less than or equal to 0.1 um, the frac has to be less than or equal to 0.78 or greater than or equal to 0.78 so you can see this is the criterion value this is whether it's greater than less than or equal to and um and these this is the the statistic that uh, we're using. So, um, for example, the SCAT criterion is just set to true. Um, so that is what we'll use. Um, now we can use uh, this fun uh, feature, which is the auto interpreter, which will go through and find all of the interpretations of, for example, I could take this and I could calculate a best fit line between zero and 585, and it would give me um, all these statistics, and you can see it's failing scat very badly because this is highly curved. It's uh, zigzaggy, um, and uh, so many of the data points fall outside what's called the scat box, and so this fails scat. It also fails curvature because this is highly curved. Um, and uh, this is zigzaggy. This is an easy experiment. So you can see the blue colored um, uh, dots are the infield first steps, and the red colored dots are the zero field first steps. And you can see it alternates uh, zigzagging all the way down. So this is not a great result. Um, but we can do that automatically, find um, what what and what interpretations pass our criteria uh, by doing the tele, the Tellier auto interpreter. So now I'm going to run the auto interpreter. Okay, that took a while, but now um, we're completed. We get this message that the interpreter finished successfully. So now we can take a look at uh, some of the results. This, we, we knew already that it was not a good result and Tellier, the auto interpreter didn't find any uh, specimens that passed. But we can look through here um, and find perhaps one that passes, hopefully. Here we go. This one, uh, this sample had three specimens that passed. We're looking at the first one. A few interesting things here. This is the ancient field, um, and it's been adjusted by an anisotropy correction, which we calculated earlier, and with the cooling rate correction. So here are our two uh, fast um, experiments, and this is the slow experiment, and this is the, the, the solid uh, red. Um, thing is the original cooling rate that was estimated for these samples um, in the paper. Um, and so here you can see this is somewhat zigzaggy, but it passes um, and it passes all our criteria. Everything is green. And so um, uh, you, you can, in the preferences, uh, tell, tell Yegui that you don't want to see this. You'd rather see the, um, the equal area projection, but this tells you, this shows you uh, when you have a cooling rate experiment. Um, and here there's no cooling rate experiment because apparently this failed. Perhaps it was too curved or something. Um, and then this next one from the same uh, sample passed and we have the cooling rate experiment and so on. And so now we've calculated all these data. What remains is that we save magic tables, which will save all the interpretations um, to the magic tables. And it uh, saved in a file, and now it will save the specimens table. 
the uh, samples table and um, and all the and all the calculations that Tellier GUI made. And so now we're done with Tellier GUI. So I just closed Tellier GUI and got back to PMAG GUI. And I just wanted to take a look at, the, at what we did. So we saw before the specimens table after we added the anisotropy correction. And after we saved magic tables from Tellier GUI, um, it added a lot, all of the specimen interpretations that um, passed. The one that gives the least, in the way that we did it, it gives the least scatter at the site. So here we have added into this um, more columns. Int underscore apps is the absolute intensity estimated. Um, by uh, Tellier GUI, um, and this is in Tesla. It's just the way it is. So this would be uh, 61 microtesla. This is a column that says whether this value was corrected or not. And in this case, most of our, uh, I think all of our, our results have been corrected by anisotropy. Here's the anisotropy correction. So the original measurement was multiplied by this number which was calculated by our anisotropy data. And then uh, this cooling rate correction was also multiplied because uh, these uh, samples cooled um, originally uh, slower than in our laboratory, and so we had to adjust that for that. Uh, we didn't do a nonlinear TRM correction. Um, this is the number of measurements that uh, were used in the calculation. This is the laboratory field that was applied, and it's also in Tesla, so this is 40 microtesla was the lab field. This is the um, COS um, uh, beta, um, and uh, so this is well under the 0.1 threshold that we set. It calculated some of these others. This is COS F, um, and this is our uh, frac, which is the fraction of total remnants. This is the um, uh, K value and K prime, which are all well under 0.164. As you can see, this is co cos Q. Um, the scatter parameter, uh, it's whether or not all the data fall within a, a box, a tolerance, and uh, these are all true. Um, this was the deviation angle, that's the angle with respect to the origin of the remnants. This is gamma, which is the um, angle of the PTRM directions with respect to the applied field, and that's an indication of anisotropy, which we've uh, taken care of. Um, and then there's a bunch of other parameters which you know, we care about, and we've tagged uh, this measurement with um, the uh, method codes which tell us what this experiment was. It's a lab protocol PI paleo intensity TRM experiment. It's an easy experiment. It had some PTRM checks. It was anisotropy corrected, um, cooling rate corrected, and so on and so forth. That's what those measurement um, things and all of the data that got saved were good except for this puppy which uh, was deemed bad. Um, because uh, presumably the alteration check failed. And so that's what's in now in the specimen table now that we're, uh, we're done. What got added to the sample table should be averages of all of the specimens at, um, that uh, passed for that sample. So here's a sample um, which had no results. Um, uh, oh, that's the original. See, we have the cooling rate, uh, correct, uh, the cooling rate, the original cooling rate that we put in before, and Tellier GUI added another row that had, um, this tells you the specimens that were in, included in this average. Um, this tells you the criteria in the criteria table. Um, this is a description of what we did. It's a paleo intensity mean. The software package. This is the average intensity, 54 microtesla in this case, and this is the scatter, the sigma, 
um, standard deviation of the, the three specimens in this case um, that uh, passed um, the number of specimens and method codes that are uh, that indicate what this number means. Um, and so that's at the specimen table level. The sample, the sites, the specimen uh, table, the sample table also has, um, it links this specimen to the, the sample to the site. Specimen table links the specimen to the sample, the sample table links the sample to the site. So now we go to the site table. Um, and um, in this study, we see the location. This links the site to the location. These are the specimens that were included and the samples that are included. Here we would put in the ages. Um, and these are the latitudes and longitudes that we added earlier. Uh, this it says what criteria were passed. And these are the averages. Um, at the site level. And here, because we put in a latitude and longitude, we have calculated, Telia GUI calculated for us of the virtual axial dipole moment and the standard deviation of that. These are in amp meters squared. And so you can see uh, these, these are most of the data that you want to know. Um, and so uh, that's a quick and dirty tour. Oh, here's the location table, which we created with PMAG GUI. I already showed you that. Um, so this, this is a quick and dirty tour of what Telier GUI does for you. And, um, and, uh, and so that's the end of this little tutorial. Bye-bye.